Trust me when I say that there's no shortage of weird pieces of treasure in Sea of Thieves. From skulls that can incinerate your foes to chests that fill your ship with water, chances are that you will come across something that is more interesting than a crate of sugar. But among this assortment of special type loot, there's one that seems to have faded into obscurity. Introducing the Breath of the Sea. While this magical potion cannot actually be consumed to the disappointment of many a pirate who found it, the Breath of the Sea is one of the single most useful pieces of treasure in the game. Because you see, these things are faction agnostic. That means you can sell them to any of the main companies to gain a decent chunk of reputation, as well as gold. And that includes the fish-loving faction of the Hunter's Call. Can I finish the hardest faction grind in the game by using these items, or do I actually have to go back to fishing? That's what I want to find out. But first, we have to find out who sponsored this video, introducing Raid Shadow Legends. Okay, listen, I know that you know that both of us know this game. It being one of the most popular for to play mobile games in the Western Hemisphere that you can also play on PC, enjoying fantastic gameplay as well as graphics alongside millions of other players. Yes, I played this game unironically, so when they reached out and offered me actual money to talk about my obsession, of course I said yes. And what better time to talk about Raid than now, with them having added a brand new faction to the game, the mysterious Sylvan Watchers. Listen, if story is your thing, I mean, you're watching this channel, right? Trust me when I say that, there's plenty of that in the game. On top of a fully-fledged story campaign, there's a ton of lore you can dive into, including the origins of the Sylvan Watchers. But what I care more about is them looking absolutely bad Ass. It's hard to believe they would associate with the dwarves, honestly. On a list of things that are hard to believe, the crazy amount of new content they keep adding to the game, which was a good reason for me to hop back in. But if you're a new player, let me introduce you to the Champions Elect event. You can now vote on your favorite starter champion simply by downloading Raid Shadow Legends via the link in the description below, copying your in-game player ID, and then going to championselect.playroom.com. Simply enter your player room ID to then vote for your chosen champion, and bam! As long as you're a new player located in the US, you have a chance to win anything from legendary champions and in-game items, all the way to Amazon gift cards worth up to $1,000. And if that isn't enough incentive, if you play the game for 7 days between now and February 20th, you'll get legendary champion Ronda Chase for free. And while you do so, also make sure to use my link in the description below or scan my QR code here on screen to get a free epic champion, 200,000 silver, 1 XP boost, 1 energy refill, and 1 epic skill tome. All of these goodies will be waiting for you here for the next 30 days to new players only. Thanks a bunch to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video and now, onto our standard programming. Now, some of you might be wondering, what is stopping people from using the Breath of the Sea to cheese that grind? Uh, I'm so glad you asked, because this particular piece of loot can only be found inside mermaid shrines and treasuries, but only if you have previously acquired a coral message and a bottle. And since these bottles only show up at random with no way to affect the spawn rate, you can see why people kind of stop bothering with them. Not to mention that having to leave your ship alone whilst going down to actually clear the content is a risk that a lot of solo players are not willing to take. Thankfully, I was not gonna have to solo it, I'd be joined by Birdie and Brandon, and with a swift brigantine under our feet, I was confident that we could sweep the map in no time flat to collect as many coral messages as possible. We only had 4 hours to get the job done, because if we want to get the most bang for a buck, we have to sell these things during gold rush. I figured it made sense to drop off one person at a time while the others go to the next destination, since coral messages in the bottle stay in your inventory rather than having to be carried to the ship. However, there were other things that I did find worth taking. Oh. We do need to stop there's a mermaid gem. Birdie, drop the anchor. One minute and break one window. That's right, let's not forget that the Breath of the Sea is not the only item that can be sold to any of the main companies. Mermaid gems are the OGs of faction agnostic loot, and because I didn't know how much more effective their liquefied counterparts would be, I was inclined to pick up any gems we find as well. You might have also noticed that, as per usual, Brandon was late to the party, leaving Birdie and I to have to handle the ship. You need to merm back on the- oh, never mind, the inevitable happened. You had a rock? It came out of nowhere, man. Who would have thought that two manning a three-person vessel was gonna be an annoying endeavor. Alas, we had no choice but to continue until the sleeping beauty awoke from his slumber. But even with all the trials and tribulations we had to face, it seemed like Lady Luck smiled upon us because we found our first coral message in a bottle. Though I couldn't help but immediately be disappointed. It's a shrine. Dang it. I mean... Better than nothing. A breath of the sea is a breath of the sea, bro. True, yeah. For those of you unaware, the difference between a mermaid shrine 
mine and a mermaid treasury is that the first one is a puzzle box, whereas the second one is a combat encounter. And if you have seen our journey to the shores of gold, you will know that puzzles are not exactly our strong suit. Unfortunately, it didn't get any better for us. We were checking every beach on every small island west of the map, but even after Brandon finally blessed us with his presence, things were looking dire. Not because we couldn't find any more coral messages, but because every message we found was yet another shrine. An hour into our search-a-thon, we had gotten our hands on three of these crusty bottles, but the result was always the same. It's another shrine, bro! What is happening? Bro, we're getting all the shrines today. Uh, We could complain all we wanted, but time was working against us. Between searching so many islands, as well as Karen deciding to spare us a visit, we were left with only two hours until Gold Rush. And since all of our messages were shrines, we'll probably need every minute of that. Meaning it was time to go for a dive. The Shrine of Ancient Tears was our first destination. Birdie and I would try to solve the puzzles hidden within this tomb, whilst Brandon stayed on our ship to to make sure we don't get attacked. And as much as this was my first time stepping into the shrine, thankfully, Birdie had a little bit of experience. Oh, that's a pressure play too. Yeah, I think uh, we need to light these braziers, and then you could do this solo, but you have to run on all the pressure plates really quickly. Unfortunately, this is where his expertise ended. We successfully opened what appeared to be several gates, and let's just say that we weren't exactly in agreement about where to go next. This shrine was a lot bigger than I anticipated, making me worry about us being able to meet our deadline, and that worry was only exacerbated once we got to the meat and potatoes of this quest. This is where things get complicated. Complicated, you say? What are you doing? I'm just touching things. Okay, stop. I'm touching Am I not supposed to be touching things? Don't touch anything else. Did you touch something? No, it's just moving on its own. I don't know if you're being for real. <laughs> no, like seriously, I was not touching anything. So there's a certain order that we have to flip all these switches in. I mean, they have drawings right next to them. Is that an indication for anything? An indication it was. One telling me to go do something else and let Birdie handle the puzzle. I mean, his half of the brain cell was about as good as mine, but if I wasn't allowed to touch anything anyway, I might as well go explore something else. I parkoured my way up the shrine, eventually finding yet another switch, which of course I touched immediately, before noticing a drawing beneath it. Apparently, I had flooded something while Birdie opened another door. I'm not entirely sure who took credit for this discovery, but all that mattered was that we began making progress. <gasps> there it is! Breath of the Sea! We found it. Ruby Breath of the Sea, let's go. A cliff, we're not done. That's right. I know that this item is why we came here in the first place, but fact of the matter is that this is merely a bonus objective as far as the game is concerned. There was a lot more treasure to be uncovered beyond just this one, and once we made heads and tails of the switches and drawings, we could make our way deeper into this temple. The switches needed to be activated in order to open the way forward, and as we pushed on, we also had to light all the braziers we could find to uncover all the loot. I make that sound very simple, and that's because it is, though that didn't stop us from taking way longer than is reasonable to finally get our hands on everything this shrine had to offer. We could use the mermaid statues to bank our loot, as well as get back to our ship, and as it turned out, we were not the only ones who were hard at work. We have returneth. Oh, you're fishing, nice. Welcome back. I got a starshine, ancient scale. I got, hold on, uh... A, a trophy smoke ancient scale. Damn. I got a trophy sunny splash tail. Oh, not, not that good, but... And yeah. I got a ruby splash tail. Now what, some of these are better than others, but I'll take it. This is a reminder for why we were doing this in the first place. It's either getting our hands on a collection of liquefied gemstones or going back to fishing. Lord knows there are more fun things you can spend your day doing, and it very much appeared as though the entire rest of our server was trying to prove it. Truly a PvP streamer's paradise with all these reapers fighting to get their hands on the Fort of the Damned. As for us, there were more shrines that needed clearing. And unfortunately, they all have different puzzles that you need to learn how to solve. This time, Brandon would lend me his massive IQ in an attempt to collect our second Breath of the Sea whilst Birdie was the one keeping watch. A pretty fun water slide led us down to our workplace for the day, and surprisingly enough, we immediately got a glimpse of what we were after. <laughs> I see the loot! It's all the- oh my god! My oh, we were so close already! I hate that they do that. A little teaser. Alright, what do we- do here? I'm already a little confused. Oh, there's a- I'm at a, I'm at a lever. I, I guess these little holes have levers in them? I'm gonna pull it. Are you ready? Sure, yeah.
That's mildly unsettling. But not as unsettling as having to watch this gameplay uncut. Eventually we realized that, with the guidance of the statue that was apparently playing back music at us, we had to find and activate three levers in a certain order. Once the final lever was activated, you will notice that now music is being played once again, but this time the gem was glowing as well. Sounds easy enough, right? Find as well as activate the levers and boom, we got a breath of the sea. <laughs> no. Because the developers over at Rare are massive fans of the rule of three, we had to do this song and dance a total of three times. Every activation opened up new crevices with new levers to activate. And of course, we also had to fight some fish people. Once complete, the water is going to rise and allow entry onto the platform that holds all the treasure we saw when sliding down. And as it turned out, we were in for a massive surprise. Yo, we got two breath of the sea. We don't have to do this twice. Let's go. Nice. Easy clap. All right, where's the bank here's the bank let's go apparently finding a coral message in a bottle for the same shrine twice does not mean you have to do the puzzles over again but instead you are simply given all of your rewards at once but whereas we were hard at work birdie was most assuredly hardly working and that guy calls himself a hunter of stormfishes on the note of which we had a ways to go to reach the final shrine and if we had to sail through a storm anyway we might as well get some stormfish now i'm not gonna try and conjure content where there is none this is one of the few shrines i've actually already completed before, and as such, I let Birds and Brandon take a bit of a break while completing it on my own. An emerald breath of the sea awaited me at the end of these very simple jumping puzzles, and because we saved a lot of time at the last shrine, I did end up going for the rest of the loot as well. With a total of 17 minutes left before Gold Rush, we were in fantastic shape to finally end my hunter's coal grind. Gems, fish, meat, and of course, our breath of the sea were lined up and ready to go as soon as the multiplier kicked in. We got to enjoy one last toast to our fishing adventure before selling all of our riches. Quick update on the Fort of the Dam, by the way, every single Reaper disappeared with none of them finishing the fort. I figured you would like to know that, but enough waiting. It is time to finish this trilogy. Here it comes. This was barely a level, bro. Talk about underwhelming. Even with a profit of 215,000 gold, the reputation was nowhere near enough to push me over the edge. So I did what I had to and begrudgingly fished my way to level 50 with the Hunter's Call. If you want to see how this entire fishing adventure began, make sure you check out my video titled The Hardest Grind in Sea of Thieves. You can find a card on screen right now. But until then, thank you everybody so much for watching. I hope you guys have a day filled with riches on the sea. And until next time, peace. Yeah, screw it. I'm cheating. <laughs> I'm tired of fishing. I'm just gonna... <laughs> I'm just gonna fish like that. Calls. We're done. I'm not doing legendary Hunter of the Sea of Thieves. We got 50? That's all I care about.